You may have heard that the Horus Heresy is getting a brand new edition pretty soon, and for the launch, they've brought out a huge box set filled with a total of 54 miniatures. To celebrate the arrival, Games Workshop have asked myself and Georgie to paint up this entire box set as the Boys With Daddy Issues. But, I mean, saying the original Boys With Daddy Issues, they all have daddy issues. That's the point of the whole game. True. 40k and 30k and Warhammer Just would not daddy exist issues. if they didn't have daddy issues. The Metal Boys With Daddy Issues. It's the 10th Legion, the Iron Boys, the Iron Hands. This was the first time we kind of collaborate, collaborated on a project and painted something together. Which is which is really cool. It was a really fun thing to try and kind of work together and do. It's fun. only slightly more expensive and more troubling than like couples counselling, so I would recommend it because we got an army at the end of it. So who's the real winner here? Games Workshop, I guess. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean. Obviously, as you can imagine, when you're collaborating on something of this size, and with this kind of time scale, you learn a lot about each other. I think we both know we've got very different painting styles. We've got very different approaches to how we do things. Wasn't allowed to paint it pink and it wasn't word bearers. What am I going to do? If it's not Blood Angels, it's not word bearers and I can't take bright pink, why am I here? <laughs> so we had to try and kind of reconcile those two styles into something that would be appropriate for the Horus Heresy, that would look effective and that would, you know, that would, would fit with the vibe of what we're trying to create. I mean, we needed speed. Like, we needed, like, I am speed, Lightning McQueen. You're an idiot. We have the need. The need for speed is what you should have said there. Now, Lightning McQueen, ka -chow. <laughs> Really, I could have done with an iron will rather than iron hands because this box is bloody massive and it's filled to the brim with 54 miniatures. 40 of the most controversial marine armor patterns according to every Facebook group ever. An incredible mustache, a gigantic axe, 10 cataphracti terminators, finally a plastic multipose contemptor with all of the weapon options, almost, as well as a beast of a plastic spartan with an interesting marking on the sprue, which could be telling of this kit's future. Speaking of future, there's a slip inside here with all of the new units that were announced at the Horus Heresy Open Day Warhammer Fest thing that we went down to. But no one mentioned this Relic Contemptor right in the middle. Is this the old resin one amongst new plastic kits? Probably not. Is it yet to be announced? Maybe. I guess we'll see. The Mark VI Beacon Marines are much closer to the Primaris in terms of how they go together compared to the Mark III, Mark IV ancestors. It can lead to some repetitive poses, uh, but you could convert these, but due to time constraints, I just kind of just built them as they were. Why did you laugh? They could be converted and made it look really cool, but I didn't do that. <laughs> Yeah. The only real complaints about these are the shoulder pads that are in two parts, as well as the mold lines that are running across the ridges of the backpack. But once you whip out the sanding sticks or scrape them with the saddier knife, the models do look really good. They don't squat as much as the older Firstborn and appear to stand slightly taller, whilst also sitting slightly smaller than the newish Primaris Marines. So Mikey built the models, and as he built the models, I based them as we went, kind of production line style, right? So I have always been raised in this hobby for nearly 10 years in the same way that I don't ever actively remember learning the words to Bohemian Rhapsody. I think I was just born knowing them. I think everybody that paints minis is born knowing bases and faces, right? You make the bases and the faces look good and your model is gonna pop. So when Mikey, said, <laughs> when Mikey said he wanted to aim for a kind of more minimal and barren base, he made some pretty valid points, mostly the need for speed. To channel that, I use the Vallejo basing texture in the pumice. It's kind of granular and kind of sandy looking when it dries. Yeah, you can really slap it on and hope for the best when it dries. Are you undermining my craft? Because that's no, what it feels like. No. Then I lovingly hand selected each individual piece of slate, and that is not an exaggeration. I think there is some footage of me literally rootling about, rootling and tootling about in the... Um, rootling and tootling yeah, about in some slate. Yeah, to kind of pick the exact correct elements. Um, to kind of add a little bit of a focal point so they didn't look completely barren that kind of anchors it to the theme that we're going for, but we want to err on the side of that rugged and sparse minimalism. The new contemptor is kind of fiddly compared to the previous plastic version. It's just as poseable as the previous resin version. I also opted to magnetize the weapon as I wanted to go for rule of cool right up until I know what actually everything does. However, I don't think Warhammer community quite realized this when taking the picture for the article. Whilst not quite as poseable, the Spartan does come with a lot of options. 
such as even more lav cannons for the whole mounted weapons and a range of pintle mounted guns to boot. There are a lot of parts in this kit, but it goes together pretty well, mostly. I will just say that these the two vehicles are just kind of fiddly, but they do look really good. I built the Cataphractor, but most of you will have seen those already, so it's on to painting. To get that ball rolling, I start with the Halfords Grey Primer. What, what are you laughing at me for? It's like, Halfords have a great range of sprays that work great for models, especially the black, grey and white. Pop down to your local Halfords and get your spray today. Please sponsor me, Halfords. Anyway, we sprayed them grey. <laughs> <laughs> Get them grey, lads. Spray them grey, and then I spray them with the metallic from Halfords as well. Now, most of the sprays are really good, but some of the metallics are really glossy, so do you, like, test it out before you spray it, like, an entire box? Because they're intended for cars and not miniatures. <laughs> Halfords, here for you. What's their, what's their slogan? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> Drive away happy. Was it that? Probably. It that's good if it's not. You can have that, Halfords. That's on me. For life's journeys. Halford's slogan, I just googled it. <laughs> anyway, I didn't test it and I got quite lucky. I just sprayed it all over, it was fine. But we went for a dark metallic look because it's so hard to differentiate certain legions from a distance because they have black armor, they have silver trim, they have like bronze details, they all look the same. So we went for like a dark metallic instead. And once they were all dry, I stuck each miniature to a shot glass with blue tack to act as a cheap and easily replaceable painting handle. And now as a friendly reminder from me to you, Please, for the love of God, look after your airbrush. Clean it when you've done and protect the nozzle. Something had damaged my nozzle and I didn't realise, but I struggled with it for a few hours. Happens to every guy. Until I eventually gave up and ordered a new brush. So I did what any sane person would do with this predicament. Sometimes when you get projects like these, it's just easier to take a step back, reconsider, um, order a new one with Amazon Prime, and play something a little bit more interesting. <laughs> How do I flip the camera? Ah! So once my new nozzle arrived, I highlighted the primer metallic using model air gun grey, focusing on the upper areas and the most interesting points. I then mixed up a bright colour using some gold hue to make the armour look more tarnished. Foul tarnished. As well as adding some interesting purple and green hues before we go over everything with the black tint. I picked up this tip from Henry over at Cult of Paint as it helps add an interesting finish when the models are sprayed over with a thin layer of black Templar contrast, which is actually more like a blue than a black. Um, Henry, we love you. Thank you for fetching me ginger nut biscuits when we were playing our demo game. Just want to shout out, shout out Henry, keeping me, keeping my blood sugar up. So in terms of details, like the details of, you know, biscuits, um, we kind of faced something of an impasse. An impasse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You say it so politely. Oh, we I mean. really disagreed and you fell out with me about it. We faced something of an impasse. Um, we knew that we had to have our Iron Hands look, you know, like Iron Hands. Actually um, mad moves though. I know, right? <laughs> I was I was fully ready to ice out these boys with some nice work on the trim, you know, but then I tried it on a couple and it looked dangerously close to us having like an Iron Warriors army. So They all look the same, it's so annoying. We knew at this point we wanted to try something with OSL and we had some pretty grand plans for weathering and streaking grime. Not streak and grime, as I've been calling it, for the past seven months. Um, so instead, we kind of went for a gun grey and Sycorax bronze combo on the shoulders and the crests and then minimal parts of the armour just to kind of pick out little bits of detail, little points of interest that kind of draw your eye to it, but you didn't want to kind of overwhelm the... Because um, they're dull. We get beaten up so everyone else can then overpower the enemy, but we get beaten up first because we're dull and boring. Iron hands. Woo. Feels like there's some projection going on there, hon. But that's fine. You don't want to overwhelm the um, the mini and make them look like someone they're not. That's not who they are. Then I vitally took a quick TikTok break. You of know, course. which was, I mean, this one, could very it was easily one shoulder pad TikTok break. Listen, one shoulder. This pad. could very easily have TikTok been a demonetized video <laughs> if my for you page is on this. <laughs> that could have been very dangerous. Games Workshop also sent along an Iron Hands transfer sheet, and I opted to use the different clan markings as squad markings because you got sorry, a death wish. I've got a death wish. Yeah, clearly. But you've seen this hundreds of times before now. Use Microsol Microset. It's really good. We put them on the shoulder pads. I also put some on the armor panels of the Spartan and the Dreadnought as well. My friend from Instagram 
Persephone. Used her sisters out. of battle decals as like nail art. The and it looked. Now is not the time for me to tell this story. After we put on the decals, it was just a case of tying up any other details like, like the black casing on the weapons, the pouches, the cloth. You know, just putting colour down where it's needed. You may have noticed on some of the models they don't actually have any heads. I sprayed these separately to save time and let me get easy access to all the details without having to like fight around the collar of the model or the armour. And I also airbrushed the Praetor cape, bright red, so bright the camera broke and didn't film any, any of this bit. It was just to add a really bright contrast to the blue tone of the armour that we'd got. After that, after all the details have been painted, we've glued all the models together. It's time for streaking grime. King. Because I, I was like, streak, you know when someone says something really fast? So streak I was like, grime. streak and grime. Streak and, streak and grime. Streak, streak and, and grime. grime. Like, shake, shake and, bake. and bake. And <laughs> which I discovered for the first time reading this script just now. So. Yeah. We've got to stop doing that. <laughs> Jesus. So, streak. King the hard yeast makes or breaks miniatures, right? Especially when you kind of slap it all on as frivolously and with such reckless abandon as Mikey does here. Um, so <laughs> it's an enamel based wash, so it stains and leaves an overall kind of filter, sepia mm, filter moment. A dirty filter. Dirty. And it can be reactivated with white spirits to force it into the recesses. And then you clean it off. Yeah, um, like rolling the cotton bud up and down with yeah. it that we learned from Spence painting. King Spence. I don't know how we would have gotten through this without you. I love you. We cleaned it off kind of the uppermost surfaces to leave this like dirty brown looking appearance in the um, the recesses to make them look fully dirty get them looking like they have literally been in a war that's kind of their thing that right? grim dark grim dank look you know they say like oh you need the grim dark look what they mean is by streaking grime that's what they mean i was terrified because obviously <laughs> i have like a nine to five job so mikey would send me updates of bits that he was doing and stuff like this and he just sent me that clip of oh oh my child oh, oh no down but... the train. <laughs> i'd say i'd only done it once before because i the source painting actually first got me onto it and then spence did like really good videos about horus heresy specifically it's the That's definition really of trust the process i think streak of yeah. crime, isn't it but it's very dull i'm fed up of dull so once we've doused the meticulous airbrush work in essentially pretend dirt, we weathered the models even more with rust, using orange to contrast well with the bluish tone that we've already got. And we did it with some watered down scrag brown, so just super, super watered down scrag brown. None of this fancy product that everyone's using on YouTube. Unless the company is watching, then my, um, then my uh, email is in the description. <laughs> And while we're here, we also did some verdigris with some oxide. Again, the company is watching, then... Then, we wanted to kind of go in and these guys are soldiers, make them look battle damaged. They're already dirty, now you want to make them Hit look them. like they've been fighting, right? We used a it's a kind of sponge technique, right? Mm. So you use a, a silvery colour, gunmetal colour, um, on a sponge, and then you can go around kind of the edges as opposed to edge highlighting and things like that and highlighting it you can go around the edges with that metallic color to make it look like paint's chipped off and you want to randomize it as well you don't want to make it really uniform you want to make it look random and hit those areas like the edges of things that would get nicked in battle everyone um, always says like not too much but not too little and no one really explains what that is so just yellow it you'll be fine I think it looks really cool and I think there's a trend of people doing it more and more especially in stuff like 30k because it's all very you enjoyed doing this bit right and this bit was fun this bit was fun in my defense it took me back to preschool so yeah and this bit was fun so once you've done that you can go over with an even brighter silver so I think I used aluminium at this point and we I did actually edge highlight some of the battle damage just to really really bring it out and make it like deep chips and lighter chips it was great chips Binley wow. Mega Chippy. <laughs> Binley Mega Chippy. Okay, one of the final jobs we had to do was the the eye lenses and all the all the other blue lenses. And th at this point, again, they were getting there, but they were still dull AF. So it was time to like just push it to the max. And Reddit will hate this. Everyone will hate this. Reddit did hate this. I was gonna do some OSL, so I painted all the lenses and all the the 
lights on the miniatures, like with Cantor Blue, with the dark blue. And then I airbrushed with Cantor Blue. The reason I painted it is so that the airbrush has the airbrush colour has something to grip onto. But essentially I built it up from Cantor Blue through to like Thousand Suns Blue, like a brighter blue, and then eventually to a blue white to like and again just like extreme OSL or object source lighting. And this is just again just to give the miniatures like a really big pop. We've got all the oranges from the, the roast, we've got the reds, we've got the blue tone from the armor. So this like really brings the armor together and it just gives you something to look at and it really makes it go from base rings within black armor to like, oh wait, they're actually really cool. They're actually quite interesting. And we also did the lightning claws and stuff like that and all the, the lights on the bars and just to give it something. We just needed a color pop because it's so, so dull. And I think this like really made it. I think so. Not, not according to anybody on Reddit though. No. But to add to OSL or object source lighting, once you've actually sprayed it, once you've finished spraying, you need to add some contrast and definition once again. So I recess shaded it with Dragon Off Nightshade and then dot dot highlighted it with like a white, a very, very light blue. It's basically white with a tiny bit of blue in rather than blue with white in. Speaking of bases and faces, uh, we didn't actually record the rest of the basing part, so you just get our faces. Wait, it was just so fast and so cool. We forgot that we 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 were so we're close, it's, it's so close continue. to the deadline <laughs> that, that we forgot. So here they are, our little babies. I'm going to try and make it really cinematic and narrative now for you because we don't have any visual mediums. So they were looking really fresh. Well, not that fresh. They've been mucked up with. <laughs> streak and grime but they were looking great um and so the last kind of step in the process was to go in and kind of muss them up real big with some pigments so we mm. used four different colors right it was like brick dust rust medium rust track rust <laughs> and black That's the rust club it was the rust yeah, club and a little bit of red as well so what you want to do is you want to get a coarse paintbrush one that you're not super precious about <laughs> never using again i will clarify <laughs> Because you can jab in it, jab in it real good. Yes. <laughs> so, like you're down at Binley trying to get you chips. Like, don't, get out of my way. Binley is the holy ground. <laughs> and then there's no rhyme or reason. Again, a lot of this has turned into go hog wild, right? Yeah. What we wanted to do was kind of mix in the colors to make it look really vibrant, but also kind of add a little bit of focus, mix the colors, have a dark section, a bright section, you know, not make it look too uniform. Mm. We wanted to adhere to the theme that we had in mind. Top tip. Top, top tip gamers tip. do this on a tray right okay because it's very messy so if you're doing this on a tray or holding your models over a tray you can then save your workspace and your clothes but not your lungs unfortunately mm -hmm. from um from getting all that powder on them but also when you've got the last two or three there you can just recycle the stuff that's on the tray yeah, just pick it up slap you know? it back on. The, another key point of what we did here is these guys have been walking through dust right they are soldiers they are on this mission they are traversing the wastes so they're not going to be pinned neat you want to kind of drag it up the legs um and any spots that you think you know when you're running and then you look at the back of your jeans and you go Ugh, i've got mud there do it make it happen with the pigments that way it just makes them look more lived in it makes them look like they have fully been traversing through this desert again less isn't always more you know no. sometimes more is slap more it on. We did, that's a lot of this paint job is slapping it on and hoping for the best you know what? And I'm fine with that. And it worked. Yeah. Once once we'd done the bases, it was a case of painting the the rim, giving it a good rim job. No. <laughs> it was painting the rim, and they were done. And we had to send them off to Games Workshop. And by send them off, I mean I personally delivered delivered them. It's like sending your babies off to uni. Yeah. Except cheaper, <laughs> maybe. And we got it done in plenty of time. And I was really happy with them. I think time, no, sure. You hated every no, step. No, I... every, every time I was like, we're going to do, we're going to do dirty, bright OSL, orange, orange dust bases. And Judge was like, no, I hate it. I want it. to clarify, orange is my favorite color. The orange bit I was happy with. But I think that, I think it was a bit of a departure from how I would normally go about painting something like this, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, the time frame had a lot to do with that because yeah. we were limited in what we could do. Yeah. I can't and do beautiful resin, kind of resin poor scenic bases for every single minute. That's not no. a possibility, and, right? And Heresy is all about grim dark, isn't it? You know, it's this all about. It. You know, like all 40k is all grim dark, but like heresy, especially, like that's the look mm. of the miniatures. That's the art style of most painters. Exactly. So we tried to imitate it with by doing loads of 
styles and techniques that we'd not really done before. Which, considering like, we hadn't done a lot of them before, I think... And then we just did it together. We, we, touched, it. we touched very lucky with how they turned out, I think. We delivered them to Games Workshop. They got taken away, never to be seen until the Heresy Open Day. Yeah. And we saw them on display, which That's is super cool. cool. That was um, very cool. That was really cool, because everyone, obviously all the different content creators had put a Legion in there, which is super nice. And then they went, came out of Warhammer Community, and the, the, the auto cannon got broke, and Reddit hated them because of the OSL. Which what is did fun. they say? Oh, they the said OSL. it was just too much because you can see them from a mile away because the, the lenses are too bright. Well, I'm sorry, Horus Simp 420. It's not fucking real. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. It was a funny experience. I said we've, we've hobbied together now. We've yeah. like worked on the same thing at the same time for the first time, which was fun. Yeah. We got through it in the end. I really enjoyed it. I think there's something really... Oh, she's off. There's something really pure about like sitting and doing something that you both enjoy and doing mm. it together, right? Yeah, it's, it's and I think cool. it was a really nice opportunity for us to do that because a lot of the time, if you're hobbying, you're doing it kind of for a tournament or for an army list. So it's kind of difficult for me to get invested in that because mm. it's your army, it's your list. I'm not really bothered. Yeah, and a if lot I'm of doing it, I'll do little one-offs that I think are cool that I want to play around with. We can't really do that together. You yeah, know? and you never can... really painted like a full army before. No, not really. Not to they paint like squads and stuff. Anyway. Yeah, but I think to paint the same scheme, the same army, that was a real exercise in kind of cooperation and compromise and collaboration. A lot of compromise from one of us. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think, um, I think it was it was really really fun. And I, no, I was gonna say I'd do it again, but I wouldn't. But I mean, I mean, I've only got a small Iron Hands army, and I really would like to do Kratos and. I've told all the you. other new stuff they're gonna do. Yeah, I've told you that's gonna be all in red. The boys in red. If you'd like to see me and Georgie do something like that, maybe a word bearer's army, maybe something completely different, let us know down in the comments. Uh, this is a really fun experience. So it thank was. You for sharing yeah. it with me. Thank you for having me involved. And thanks to Games Workshop for having us both involved for all for doing all the things. It was really fun, and we'd love to do something again soon. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who watches because obviously without you, we wouldn't have been invited in the first place. So thank you so much for watching and liking and doing all the things and uh, thank you so much to our members who make doing this all possible and we really couldn't do without them and i want to say a massive thank you or maybe you could say a massive thank you to our latest members thanks latest members thank you to liam t thanks connor burns cheers rins gravity toby gillam you're a legend riverside miniatures thanks so much mr burn too way to be thanks thomas dewitt Stu holmes what a guy rock guy thank you so much huge cheers to thomas mangar the standard operator thank you so much buddy the innocent seal excellent name excellent human and ao for locker cheers bro become a member if you haven't already you, like, i'll read your name out it'll be really fun you we will yeah specifically remember you should have that as a tier <laughs> Georgie gets to read your name, not Mikey. I'm a real eagle now. Um... <laughs> well, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And we've been Hells of War Gaming. You guys have been fantastic, and hopefully, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye now. Figure out how to approach different issues as they came up, and it was very enjoyable. That was almost believable. Or more it was, like, no, it was, I promise. Georgie, no, realism, grim, dark. Let's go. And like, give George me is like, nah, nah, nah. Extreme highlights. And for the launch, they brought out a humongous box. What are you laughing for? <laughs> they brought out a humongous box set. Phil, why are you scared? You can literally hear you in the 30th millennium. You're shouting that loud. That's what I want. I want Horus to hate me directly. They brought out a humongous. Humongous. <laughs> What's your name? Humongous. <laughs> a humongous. <laughs> humongous. <laughs> They brought out a humongous box. <laughs> humongous box? That is I'm such a huge box. Huge box. We've got to say huge. I can't say humongous. <laughs>